Welcome to Empires Explained, a channel dedicated to uncovering the mysteries behind the rise and fall of the greatest empires in human history. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell for fascinating videos every Wednesday. Darkness looms over the ancient hill fort of Torna as shadows stretch across its formidable walls. Warriors, seasoned and scarred, steel themselves for an impending assault. At the forefront of this army, a determined teenager stands alone, his gaze fixed on the towering bastions that shield his people's future. The wind whispers through the valley, carrying with it a question that hangs in the air. Can a boy, not yet a man, defy the course of history? In mere hours, Shivaji, just 16 years old, will attempt the impossible. He will try to take Torna Fort. 1627, deep in the heart of the Deccan, Shivaji enters the world on February 19th. This is a land soaked in blood, where the fragmented sultanates of Bijapur, Golconda, and the encroaching Mughal Empire wage endless battles for dominance. Shivaji's father, Shahaji, a formidable commander under the Adil Shahi Sultanate, navigates these treacherous waters. As a child, Shivaji is not sheltered from the brutal realities of his world. Instead, he is steeped in tales of epic battles from the Ramayana and Mahabharata, where righteousness triumphs over tyranny. Under the stern yet loving gaze of his mother, Jijabai, and the mentorship of Dadoji Kondeo, Shivaji is shaped by the dream of a Hindu Swaraja, a land where his people can live free from foreign rule. The Marathas, a proud but fragmented people, yearn for a leader to unite them, to ignite a flame of resistance against the powerful Muslim sultanates that dominate their world. 1645. Shivaji is no longer a boy, but a warrior with fire in his eyes. His heart is set on Torna Fort, also known as Prashandagad a stronghold of immense strategic importance in the Poon region. Its capture would not only grant a critical military advantage, but also serve as a bold statement, a declaration that the Marathas are no longer subjects, but sovereigns. With a small band of loyal followers, Shivaji crafts his audacious plan. The fort, lightly defended and under the control of the Adil Shahi Sultanate, presents a tempting target. Shivaji knows every inch of the terrain and leads his forces with the precision of a master tactician. As the cover of night descends, they strike. The defenders, caught off guard, are overwhelmed with swift brutality. In a matter of hours, the mighty Torna falls into Shivaji's hands. With Torna under his control, Shivaji immediately sets to work commissioning the construction of Rajgad Fort, a fortress that will soon become the capital of his burgeoning kingdom. The young leader, with the weight of history on his shoulders, dedicates the fort's temples to Hindu gods and revives religious practices suppressed under the Sultanate's rule. But Shivaji is not content with one victory. His vision of a Maratha kingdom grows with each passing day. The capture of Torna is only the beginning, a spark that ignites the flames of rebellion across the Deccan. Regional powers and the Adil Shahi Sultanate now see Shivaji as a threat that must be extinguished before his influence spreads further. But Shivaji and his followers, emboldened by their triumph, press on. The walls of Rajgad rise higher each day, a symbol of their defiance and resolve. The Maratha identity, once fractured, begins to unite under the banner of Swarajya, with Shivaji at the helm. 1647. Shivaji's ambition knows no bounds. His eyes now turn towards Puranda Fort, a formidable bastion perched high in the hills, overseeing crucial trade routes in the Pune region. This is not just a military objective. Puranda is a symbol of dominance over the surrounding territories. Its capture, would further solidify Shivaji's power and enhance his reputation as a leader capable of defying the Sultanates and the mighty Mughal Empire. 
However, Shivaji is aware a direct assault could be costly, risking lives and alienating potential allies within the fort. Instead, Shivaji sends emissaries to engage in delicate negotiations, persuading key leaders within Puranda to defect and weaken its defenses from within. But not everyone is swayed by Shivaji's overtures. For those loyal to the Adil Shahi Sultanate, Shivaji's forces prepare for a more direct approach. The battle that follows is brutal and relentless. Shivaji's warriors, honed by years of skirmishes, launch a series of coordinated attacks on Paranda's defenses. Despite fierce resistance, the fort eventually falls, its defenders overpowered and outmaneuvered. With Paranda now under his control, Shivaji wastes no time in securing his new acquisition. The fortifications are reinforced, the walls repaired and strengthened to withstand any future assault. Shivaji, ever mindful of the importance of governance, appoints competent administrators to oversee the region, ensuring law and order are maintained. The capture of Puranda is not just another victory, it is a statement of intent. Shivaji's control over the Pune region is now nearly absolute, and the Sultanates and the Mughal Empire can no longer ignore the rising Maratha power. But the defining moment of Shivaji's early campaigns comes in 1659, at the Battle of Pratapgad, a clash that will decide the fate of the Deccan. November 10th, 1659. Dawn breaks over Pratapgad Fort, where Shivaji's Maratha forces, a mere 3,000 strong, prepare to face the full might of Bijapur's army, led by the formidable General Afzal Khan. This is not just a battle, it is a test of Shivaji's strategic brilliance against a vastly superior force. The Bijapur Sultanate, alarmed by Shivaji's audacity and his swift capture of forts in the Konkan region, has dispatched Afzal Khan with a fearsome army of 10,000 horsemen. The Tariq e Ali, the official chronicle of Ali Adilsha's reign, records the Sultan's directive, eliminate Shivaji, who is now seen as a dire threat to the Islamic State. Afzal Khan, eager to prove his might, marches from Bijapur, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. He desecrates the sacred idols of Bhavani at Tuljapur and Vithoba at Pandharpur, brazenly challenging Shivaji and provoking the wrath of the Maratha leader. As Afzal Khan's army arrives at Wai, a strategic stronghold in the Sahyadri Mountains, Shivaji prepares for the ultimate test. His forces, led by trusted commanders, take up positions in the dense forests and treacherous passes of Jawali, a terrain that will soon become the graveyard for many of Afzal Khan's soldiers. October 1659. Afzal Khan, sensing that the storm is about to break, sends his envoy to negotiate with Shivaji. But beneath the surface of diplomacy, Shivaji's resolve hardens. He feigns willingness to negotiate, all the while preparing for the inevitable clash. Against the advice of his closest counselors, Afzal Khan advances to Jawali, confident he can crush the Marathas. Shivaji, however, has already set the stage for a deadly trap. His forces are positioned in key locations, ready to strike with lethal precision. The final meeting between Shivaji and Afzal Khan is arranged. Both leaders, each harboring deadly intentions, will face each other in a fateful encounter at Pratapgad Fort. The night before, Shivaji's commanders receive their orders in a secret conclave. The Bandal Deshmukh and Silimkar contingents are tasked with cutting off Afzal Khan's retreat, ensuring that once the die is cast, there will be no escape for the Bijapur forces. November 10th, 1659. The day has come. Shivaji, armed and prepared for betrayal, steps forward to meet Afzal Khan. In a tense moment, the two men meet, locking eyes in what will be a fatal embrace. Violence erupts with terrifying speed. Shivaji, quicker and deadlier than Afzal Khan anticipated, strikes first, driving his weapon deep into the Khan's chest. The Khan's guards rush to his aid, 
but Shivaji's protectors, led by the fearless Jiva Mahala, are already in motion. A fierce melee ensues, swords flashing, blood spilling. Jiva Mahala cuts down Bada Sayyid just as he is about to strike Shivaji, while the other guards are swiftly dispatched by Shivaji's loyal warriors. The battle turns decisively in Shivaji's favor. The signal is given, and the Maratha forces lying in wait descend upon the Bijapur camp like a storm. Leaderless and shocked by the sudden death of their commander, Afzal Khan's army crumbles under the Maratha assault. Musa Khan Pathan and other Bijapur officers attempt to rally their troops, but the Marathas, driven by the spirit of their leader's victory, are unstoppable. The rugged mountainous terrain, once an obstacle, now serves as the Maratha's greatest ally. The Bijapur cavalry, trapped and unable to maneuver, is cut down with ruthless efficiency. By the end of the day, the Bijapur army is shattered, its remnants fleeing in disarray. Pratapgad Fort, once a silent sentinel of the Sahyadris, now echoes with the cries of victory. Shivaji's triumph at Pratapgad is not just a military victory, it is the moment that cements his reputation as a leader. News of Afzal Khan's defeat spreads like wildfire across the Deccan, striking fear into the hearts of the Adil Shahi Sultanate and the Mughal Empire alike. But even as the Marathas celebrate, Shivaji knows that the path ahead is fraught with peril. The forces arrayed against him are vast and powerful, and the struggle for Swarajya is far from over. Yet, as he looks out from the ramparts of Pratapgad, Shivaji feels the weight of history on his shoulders. The dream of a free and united Maratha kingdom burns brighter than ever. The Maratha campaign for independence accelerates, carving a new path through the history of the Deccan. Shivaji now turns his attention to consolidating power and expanding his territory. The triumph at Pratapgad is only the beginning. The Mughal Empire, under the rule of the formidable Emperor Aurangzeb, looms large on the horizon, its eyes set on quashing any challenge to its dominance. 1660. The Mughal Maratha conflict ignites in full force, with the Mughals seeking to reclaim control over the strategically vital regions Shivaji has seized. Aurangzeb dispatches his trusted generals, Shaista Khan, and later, Jai Singh I to subdue the defiant Maratha leader. The conflict becomes a war of attrition, with both sides suffering heavy losses. Shaista Khan, a seasoned Mughal commander, is tasked with capturing Poon, the heart of Shivaji's domain. With a vast army at his disposal, he seizes the city and makes Lal Mahal his residence, believing the Maratha resistance is all but crushed. But Shivaji refuses to yield. On a moonless night in April 1663, he launches his operation. With a small band of trusted men, Shivaji infiltrates Pune and storms Lal Mahal, catching Shaista Khan completely off guard. The Mughal commander barely escapes with his life, losing fingers in the process, but the psychological blow to the Mughals is immense. Despite the raid's success, the Mughals retaliate with overwhelming force. In 1665, Shivaji faces one of his most difficult challenges yet, the Siege of Paranda. Jai Singh I, a Rajput commander in service of Aurangzeb, leads a massive Mughal force against the Marathas. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Shivaji negotiates a treaty with Jai Singh, temporarily halting hostilities. The Treaty of Paranda is a bitter pill for Shivaji to swallow, requiring him to cede 23 forts and the surrounding territory to the Mughals. However, Shivaji views this as a strategic retreat. 1666. Aurangzeb summons Shivaji to the Mughal court in Agra, intending to neutralize the Maratha threat by keeping its leader under close watch. Shivaji, accompanied by his son Sambhaji, arrives at Agra, where he is received with apparent courtesy, but soon realizes he is effectively a prisoner. 
Determined not to become a pawn in Aurangzeb's game, Shivaji orchestrates a masterful escape. Feigning illness, he smuggles himself and his son out of Agra, hidden in baskets of sweets meant for distribution among the poor. The escape from Agra is more than a daring feat. It reaffirms Shivaji's status as a leader who will not be cowed. Upon his return to the Deccan, Shivaji embarks on a renewed campaign of conquest, reclaiming lost territory and expanding his influence. The Maratha forces, invigorated by their leader's return, reclaim several forts ceded to the Mughals under the Treaty of Purandar. 1674. The time has come for Shivaji to formally declare the sovereignty of the Maratha Empire. In a grand coronation ceremony at Raigad Fort, Shivaji is crowned as Chhatrapati, the sovereign ruler of the Maratha Empire. The event is a powerful symbol of Maratha independence, marking the culmination of years of struggle and sacrifice. As Chhatrapati, Shivaji institutes administrative reforms that lay the foundation for a stable and prosperous kingdom. He reorganizes the military, focusing on mobility and guerrilla tactics, which will become the hallmark of Maratha warfare. He also establishes a navy, recognizing the strategic importance of controlling the western coast and safeguarding his kingdom from seaborne threats. However, Shivaji's ambitions extend beyond the boundaries of the Maratha Empire. He eyes the vast, fertile lands of the Konkan and southern India, territories held by the Adil Shahi Sultanate, the Qutb Shahi Sultanate, and the Mughal Empire. With a relentless drive, he embarks on a series of campaigns to bring these regions under Maratha control. The battles are fierce, and the challenges many. But Shivaji's leadership and the unwavering support of his generals bring success after success. 1680. After decades of war, expansion, and the consolidation of power, Shivaji's health begins to decline. On April 3, 1680, the Chhatrapati passes away at Raigad Fort, leaving behind a legacy that will endure for centuries. His death marks the end of an era, but the empire he founded continues to thrive under the leadership of his successors, most notably his son, Sambhaji.